What do we got? The OA is Patrick Mullen. His name and David Lorenz on a liquor license. Anyone notify the partner? Yeah, he called. He's on his way in. Who found the body? Farman, when he came in to open up. Thanks. You got it. <clears throat> Have crime scene process this. You found a body? Yeah, when I came to open. What's your name? Joe Sambora. So was that a, a surprise, Joe, how your morning began? Or did you feel more this had to happen to Pat someday? Why you take so well that present your boss being dead on the floor? At present, I'm minding my own business. Okay, Joe. Let me go do some of the rest of my job while you decide if you're going to give me some civil cooperation in this or I'm going to drag you into the station house for breaking my balls. This is my other boss over there. Oh, Jesus. Andy what's up with the 15th squad? That's my partner, dead on the floor. Yeah, I'm sorry. Dave, Lorenz. Andy Sipwitz, you two been partners a long time? Yeah, friends since we were like eight years old. Your loss, not ever knowing Pat. Is that so? Poor Patrick. Uh, Patrick was a good boss? He's a great guy. Uh, he was great overall. Yeah, for a maniac. Uh-oh, Patrick was a maniac? He loved life. Yeah, he did. I mean, but give me an image to work with. Like he was a hang glider? <laughs> Maybe if some bimbo was dangling from his parachute. Or she had a grip for dear life onto something else. Uh-oh. I just uh, wanted to tell you we uh, had to look through some of your stuff in the office. Yeah, do whatever you have to. It's Mullen's address, Paul. A lot of uh, female names. Might want to check and see if there's an Angela Zarelli in there. Why? She formerly went out with that Dino Ferrer that's in jail. Dino the rat. Angela Zarelli, here it is. Banged everything that moved the deal away. No, he just had enormous zest. Pat. A lot of zest, huh? All right, uh, thanks a lot for your help. We'll be calling you in later. Bringing that ball-breaking bartender just to ruin his morning. 1729 7th Street. Oh, right in the precinct. Hey, Miller, the dispatcher just got a call from your wife reminding you to bring home milk for the baby. Looking for Shanice Werner. Back here. She's been through a lot. Her boyfriend raped her. Did you do a kit? Yes, I did the rape kit. Shanice, the police are here. Hi, Shanice. I'm Jill Perkinder. Are you sure you're up to it at this point? Yeah, I'll talk to him. I'm Diane Russell, Shanice. Could you tell us what happened? Paul Matson did this to me. I wrote his name on my arm. In case he killed me, folks would know who did it. I need to uh, let you know, Doctor. If you stay here while we're talking to Shanice, you could wind up being called as a witness. Is there something you're afraid of me hearing? What we'd like to do is get Shanice's story with as few distractions as possible. And I just want to make sure Shanice isn't shamed or intimidated. I want to tell it. He raped me and gave me this black eye. And that was because you were resisting, Paul? I was sticking up for myself. That's right. And then he handcuffed me naked to the radiator and left me there all night. He unlocked me when he went to work. Here's his numbers. I wrote it all down. Do you and Paul have a lot of disagreements? Uh-uh. Is this the first time you had sexual contact with him? Why should having had consensual sex on a previous occasion disqualify her from bringing charges? It doesn't, Doc. Any more than whatever bad prior experience you had with our job gives you a right to interfere with our work. I'm saying this time Paul raped me. We want to take your full statement at the station house, Shanice. Come back when you're ready. Does this mean you're going to wait on talking to Paul? No, we'll call Paul now. Find that son of a bitch. He resists the rest and you got to bust his nose? That's okay, too. Okay, Shanice. What it look like with that girl? She could have been raped. She sure had a hell of a shiner. Her kit was positive, but she and the guy have been going out. Her doctor was so busy running interference, she couldn't really get the story straight. Anyways, uh, we've got this Paul Madsen coming in, the guy she says did it to her. Yeah, we, uh, we thought we'd take a look at him. Then maybe better if, uh, Baldwin and Greg do the interview. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll tell Baldwin. Hey, boss. Who's that? Tens bar where the DOA was killed. Are you going to talk to him? Yeah. Well, he had his drive, so he wouldn't lose rapport. Yeah, and he was afraid he might smack him on the way in. Jill and Diane are going to want to pass the guy out to you. Might have raped his girlfriend. So, we'll talk to him. Hey, boss. What was his attitude on the way in? It's kind of sulky. Sulky, yeah. So not how most people come into the house? Doing cartwheels and carrying on? Anyways, I need to talk to Baldwin. Sure. Yeah, we have this prior conversation to conduct anyhow.
What's your culture, Wagner? Okay. Yeah, I had breakfast with him. He said he was gonna take a vacation. Last he was in here, he, he acted like he could use one. He said to tell you goodbye, so that can be why you call him. Say goodbye back. Yes, yeah, say goodbye back. And keep him talking. Form a real good impression of how he seems. Sure. Yeah. Do it right now. Yeah, go ahead and do it. kind of guy you didn't care enough about business to get jacked up over you know what i mean his partner and him get along that's not what happened dave and him got along good this guy was essentially one of those guys like to hang out have a drink chase tail you know what i mean saying that's what got him killed something in that area his partner mentioned dino ferrara's old girlfriend we got her coming in yeah pat was putting it to angela do you know about it who's to say he sure didn't know that pat was putting it to angela last night on top of the bar you witnessed this inadvertently they thought i left so this was like a hot and ongoing thing angela and pat sake of discussion if that rat bastard Dino was responsible for having Pat whacked, would that rat bastard's plea bargain cover it? A plea bargain, Joe, covers crimes of the past. Yeah, new crimes aren't covered. I take a hard look at him. He could have reached out from the joint. You coming from any personal animosity with that suggestion about Dino, Joe? No, I looked at the cheese-eating scumbag on the merits. <clears throat> Can't be my case. No. The boss reached out to a bald one. Um, whatever it's about, if I'd known I'd be standing away from my desk this long, I'd have taken my purse. I know he's got a message machine. I've left messages on it. And if he has a dog, we're driving him crazy. I tell you, boss, I, I know where Lieutenant Abner lives. I dropped him once when his car was getting fixed. Now, why don't I take a run over there? No. I'm gonna. Yeah, they called me about my car leaving some car accident. Said to see Detective Kirkendall. You're Paul Matson? Uh-huh. Hi, I'm Detective Goodendall. This is my partner, Detective Russell. Yeah, what up? Okay. Hey, my car didn't leave no accident. Uh -huh. Excuse me. Lost time, John. Let's, uh, let's talk about it in here, Paul. See, I'm the only one drives my car, and I definitely would have noticed if I'd left. Here we go. That's our conversation. Actually, Paul, we need something else trained out. Could be, I got it. This isn't about your car, Paul. Not my Mustang. Not any car. Then what? This is about Shanice. Oh, hell, come on. She says you raped her. Look, that bitch is lucky I'm not filing a complaint on her still in my neck, Jane. Try not calling her a bitch, Paul. It makes us feel you got anger toward women. You know what? I want to talk to men detectives. Hey, you know what? You don't get to pick who you talk to. Take it easy, Diane. No, I don't have to listen to that crap. Hey, I talk to men detectives, so I ain't talking to nobody. Matter of fact, I'm only talking to an African-American. Oh. Oh, he only talks to a brother. Diane, yeah. easy. Look, um, uh, we'll see what we can do. Home. All night. What are you gonna lie about that for? Angela, we know you were at the club. We know Pat Mullen threw a hump into you on top of the bar. Why don't you ask whoever saw us whether Pat was fine when I left? Two of you didn't have no disagreement? Perhaps pertaining to Dino? Pat and I never fought. We never had a crossword. Patrick was a gentleman. How about Dino? Dino had other qualities. Do you say that affectionately, Angela, or like with some type of hostility toward Dino? How do my feelings towards Dino pertain to Pat getting killed? How about because we're wondering if maybe it was Dino who pushed the button on Pat? Oh, come on. That don't make sense to you, Angela? Dino gets resentful over you thinking that Pat's such a sweetheart and a gentleman that you're throwing humps into him in quasi-public places? No, it don't make sense. With him ratting everyone out, who's going to answer any button Dino pushes? This is Angela, thinking Dino would be restricting himself to reaching out to mob guys exclusively. Angela, this guy's on Dino's tier. Got buddies outside, will do a hit for 500 bucks, and they never even heard of Don Corleone. Anyways, that's not where Dino's at these days. He's been encouraging me to date. Really? We'll be talking to him. We'll be sure to let Dino know who gave Pat Mullen his last piece of ass on earth. Do not drive that man any further into despair. If you talk to him, you're going to see. The Dino of today is not the Dino of the past. I know. I visit him every two weeks. He never even asks to see my dicks anymore. A perfect gentleman. I don't know if we're ever going to solve the homicide, but I guarantee you we are going to be interviewing a procession of people who are damaged by this asshole Pat. This is a case where the true perpetrator is the DOA.
On an unrelated subject, that Dino must have some set of problems to turn down a look at her tits. All right. Paul Jones. I Paul Madsen. My partner, Greg Metaphor. How's it going, Paul? Look, man, I couldn't be straight up with them detectives I was talking to. You know how that goes. Sure. So, uh, tell me about last night. Look, man, this whole thing is about the girl being freaked out because me and her on the downside. You're saying you didn't rape her. Brother, I've been hitting that thing for three months. What would I be needing a rape her for? So, uh, her being so willing, Paul, how come Shanice winds up with a, a black eye? Behind lifting my gold chain from the nightstand. That's got my St. Christopher. My mom's give me that. So, uh, you hit her to get it back? No, man, it ain't like that. Look, man, her taking the chain was just part of her going psycho. She started spitting and screaming and beating me on my head. Why was she doing all that? Because I was more or less letting her know that was going to be it for us. You know, after I freaking Iraq. So, uh, you're saying that you broke up with Shanice, she started hitting you, and you gave her a black eye, fending her off. Yeah, that's it. Look, man, I'm talking about beating me on my head, man. I had to grab some handcuffs, fix her to the radiator till she calmed down. Mm-hmm. Now, you keep these handcuffs lying around? Well, my brother Henry, you see, he's a corrections officer down at the tombs. They're his cuffs. Turns out I didn't have the key. My brother was on shift. I couldn't call no locksmith. Naked woman cuffed to my radiator. And he might not understand. Exactly. So I gave her a warm blanket, some water, a cup to pee in. First thing this morning, I went out and got a metal drill bit, came back, cut her loose. Well, Paul, we still got Shanice saying rape. Look, brother, that's the thing, man. It ain't just my word. I got proof there was no rape. What kind of proof? Got a videotape. Me and Shanice fuck wild. You can see for yourself she was into it. Did you know about this video? Oh, hell no. Got this rig set up. A couple of motherboards and some wires they run through to my VCR. I got the lens head in my closet. You take yourself having sex? Yes, sir. Why? Well, in case I'm falsely accused. These bitches come after your nest egg. Look what happened to Tyson. Well, can we see this tape? If you want, I'll call my brother and have him bring it down here. Yeah, give him a call. Right, give me the horn. Should we warm them up with a couple jokes? How's it going? Thanks for bringing them over. Danny Sorensen, Dino. My partner, Andy Sipowitz. Delighted. Coffee room? Hey, thanks, Sly. Come on, we'll talk down here. It's hot in here. Uh, you want us to turn it down? Uh, it could absolutely be me. They got me upstate. Freeze your balls off. Still, I'm intolerably hot. Had you down here testifying? Endless. Case after case. You're such an eloquent witness. Is that some implication? Never. No. So we just got a few questions, Dino. Where were you going with that? I turned on my own? Dino, you and me probably don't got 12 grades between us. But the last I looked, eloquent was like uh, John Kennedy. Oh, what you can do for your country. There you go. Dino, you know Pam Mullen? Owns a place on Ludlow. Had a couple of good times at... Uh, with a certain friend. Who'd you have the good times with? Why? Angela Zarelli? Look, I talk to you out of courtesy. You turn your cards over, I respond, you let me go back upstate. You got a policy on Angela fraternizing, Dino? Hands off. I want the girl to have a life. No feelings whatsoever, however she might carry on. Do I look like stone? Do I look like some Greek statue? No, you don't. But I'm a realist. Uh, I'm also going through a very down time with my uh, relationship abilities. Which I'm half worried has to do with what they're feeding me up there. She was screwing Pat Mullen. She was seen talking to him was all. Big rep like you got, 
we figured we'd take a flyer. Did you reach out for Pat from upstate in a fit of homicidal rage? Hey, the Dino of today is not the Dino you guys must have heard about. Hey, who is? I hammer it home to this guy that that Angela was banging Mullen. He's totally unrelated to the case, just Dino. Totally unrelated and in a complete depression anyhow. <sighs> We're done with them. Thanks a lot. Hey, tell them upstate they might try cutting down on Dino's dose of salt, Peter. Paul's brother? That's the prison guard? The guy Paul had bring the tape in. Yeah. He obviously feels as Paul's an asshole. He, he said, uh, what kind of trouble is my brother now? He didn't know what's on the tape. No. So, he's in the same boat with us. Who? We don't know what's on the tape either, Baldwin. If he's having consensual sex with this girl or beating on her or what. Watching the tape in the coffee room. Uh, shouldn't we be watching it too, D? In case we have to go back at the guy? You want to go in there, Greg? Go ahead in and watch it. Well, we could uh, watch after the girls. Would you be more comfortable doing it that way? I'd be more comfortable not watching white people watch black people have sex. <laughs> I think that may be a little personal problem I need to deal with on my own. Wonder where the boss has got to. Yeah. I guess he's with Lieutenant Abner. Yeah, I guess so. I am concerned my husband's in danger. His uh, business partner was murdered this morning, and I'm concerned he's in danger, too. I think you want to speak with Detective Sorensen. The detective? Yeah, Sorensen, can I help you? Uh, my name is Sarah Lorenz. Related to Dave Lorenz? Yeah, he's my husband. This is Mrs. Lorenz, Andy. My partner, Andy Sipowitz. How do you do? How do you do? Where? Who's investigating the homicide? That Mullen's murder. Mrs. Lorenz is afraid her husband, Dave, could also be in danger, Andy. Want a cup from a bad batch of coffee? No, thank you. <laughs> We're approaching this for now as a robbery went wrong. I see. In which case, your husband, Dave, wouldn't be in any particular danger. I see. The other hand, him and me are open to suggestions, Mrs. Lorenz. I know they had to deal with, um, undesirable types. Had your husband or his partner borrowed any money or the like from specific undesirables they were having trouble paying back? No, I... I don't know. So this, this worry for your husband being in danger, this is more like a, a general misgiving you that. Mrs. Lorenz, unless they got mental problems, people don't tend to make voluntary trips into the station house off general misgivings. I think I speak for Andy feeling something specific's causing your worries, Mrs. Lorenz. I don't know. But somehow he... he could be upset about some phone records. Where are the phone records from? Our home. Between our home and his work. At times when Dave wasn't at home. Or at work either. So these would be phone calls between uh, yourself and maybe his partner. Is the danger you worry Dave's in from being arrested, Mrs. Lorenz? That maybe he was so upset about these phone records you're describing, Dave went and did something to Pat at the bar? That's my fear. You were having an affair with this partner? That's Dave's fear. You and Pat were not having an affair? Oh, I'm so worried about Dave. How did he come to look at the phone records? He asked to see them. When he'd had two sidecars, which he never does, he made me show them. Then he didn't say anything, and, and he left. Did he have a gun? I think he took the gun with him. It's my fault. I broke his heart. Saying he had a basis on his fears. Dave, 
about you and Pat. He was so sorrowful that Pat was dead. It's the only hope I have that Davy didn't. All right, thanks very much for coming in. He really was so sorrowful. Isn't that a basis for cautious optimism? Yeah, maybe all this can work out. That woman, she couldn't face the truth if it uh, jumped out of the mailbox. How'd you get her to the stairs? Tell her it's the roof. I picked the husband up. We're asking him to come in. He'll come in. It's this poor much. Just tell him we need help. Selfish bastard, this pet. If he'd have lived, they'd have figured him out for the jerk that he was. All this charm and stuff, that only lasts a while. Then you're revealed for the selfish, drunken prick that you are. Call and get this guy in. This Wednesday. Paul says you came at him after he accused you of stealing his gold chain and you got the black eye when he was fighting you off. Now, even if he was lying about that part, because the videotape shows that you didn't tell the truth when you said he raped you, the district attorney isn't going to charge Paul with rape or anything else. He gave me that chain and he gave me this black eye getting over on me. And no damn videotape is going to show any difference. I want to see that thing. What's that going to accomplish except to upset you, Shanice? And how are you so sure? You've seen the tape? You've seen it? I agree with my partner. With what the tape shows, the DA's office won't prosecute. That doesn't mean we don't have sympathy for your situation. Or that we necessarily believe the rest of what Paul's saying. We've got him here so we can see if he's got any other charges outstanding. So you two sat there and watched him do me. Take it easy, Shanice. Well, maybe because it happened to me, you just don't think it counts. That's a lousy one. Boyfriend's definitely supposed to be a caller. I guess she uh, let her wounded pride get in the way of telling what happened straight. Anyways, he's got no wants out. Should we let him go? If nobody needs a pokey room, I wouldn't be in any frenzy to let that prick go. Yeah, maybe the draft in there will give him the flu. But when if, if we did something that pissed you off before when you brought in the tape, Diane and I wanted to apologize. And if we're sitting there breathing in and out? It sure seemed like you got pissed off. I got some work to do, toughen up my skin. Oh. Here I spend all this time trying to soften mine up. You see that? Anyways. Baldwin. shot himself. Sitting in the empty bathtub. If he'd had family, I'd have pulled him out and put him someplace else. Made it look like he was cleaning his gun, but there was... There was no family or pension to protect. So I'm faking it just to save his reputation. Uh, the same cops that you'd be looking to protect him with would be the ones that know what you did. But you'd feel guilty no matter what you did or didn't do. You did everything you could. I had concerns. But I couldn't see a way to constructively intervene. Just have to accept how you're gonna feel. Here's an interesting point. Here's an interesting point. If he had been white, I would have notified early intervention. And what are you telling me that for? I was afraid he'd think I was trying to cost him his job. I was more comfortable risking him killing himself than that he'd think about me that way. But that's just something I have to live with. He wasn't going to be stopped. So where are you with your case? The girl made the wrong complaint. 
This guy beat her and chained her to a radiator. One thing he didn't do was rape her. So the sex was consensual? And on tape. Her lying, the doctor writing up the rape complaint. There's no way to make her credible on the stuff that did happen, and her asshole boyfriend cops do. A lot of times, Bulba, a precinct squad's the last part of the system that's about justice. It's about people getting what they deserve. Victims and skills. Let me let this Paul Matson go with a warning. The boyfriend that beat her up and changed it to the radiator? Yeah, that's him. Yeah. Let him go with a good warning. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you too, Baldwin. Trying to put a few things together. Uh huh. Could it have been Dino Ferrer, you think? Getting it done from prison? I would tend to think no. No. I mean, out of jealousy? Pat couldn't keep it in his pants without Angela. It's not looking like that. <sighs> Poor Pat. You talk about what a great guy he was. Guys like that make enemies. Pat. Go around sticking it to women with prior relationships? <laughs> Guys, look. You know the expression, thinking with your joint? That was Pat. And you couldn't hold it against him. Hey, if he was sticking it to my wife, I could hold it against him real easy. No, no, no. That's because you didn't know Pat. That's the one point I'm trying to make. Pat was the salt of the earth. And the last thing that he wanted to do was half of the stupid stunts that he pulled. That's why I say, think it with your joint. I'd still feel pissed off. Yeah, that's because you didn't know Pat. <laughs> your wife, Sarah, came in. Worried sick. Maybe it was you that killed him. I killed him? Yeah, she was worried sick. Well, I mean, what was her basis? Some business-type disagreement-type basis? No, that you thought she was having an affair with him. Oh, no, come on. Come, come on! You didn't think she was having an affair? Look, I have irrational fears, all right? And I had irrational fears on this subject, on the basis that Pat's a very charismatic guy. Now, I may not be in the top 100 charismatic guys in America. And Pat tends to think with his joint. I love Pat, and I love my wife, and whatever irrational fears I had, or irrational fears that Sarah might have had, that I might have done, I did not murder Pat. So let's take that one off the radar screen. I think you murdered him. Hey, I'm sitting here telling you I didn't do it. I loved Pat. I think you loved him and you murdered him. I think you went back to the club with the phone records showing him and your wife talking to each other when you were out of the house. And you asked Pat how a guy, charismatic as he is, and, and friends and partners with you for as long as he'd been, and knowing how you loved your wife, thinking with his dick or not, how could he do something like that? You know? And Pat couldn't come up with a good enough answer. Maybe because he'd been thinking with his dick recently with Angela, or maybe his answer was too good. Maybe he told you, hey, that's me. That's who I am. And you knew if you didn't kill him, you would forgive him even for tearing your life apart. That 38 at the crime scene, Mr. Lorenz, we got lifts off the shelves in the other chambers. Your prints are on file at the State Liquor Authority. Earlier you come forward before we build up incriminating evidence. It goes a hell of a lot better for you. Don't give the motive to the press. I got two kids. Let the kids think it was a business thing. You did not intend for this to happen. That gun was at the club. You did not bring that gun with you. All right. Thanks for the tip. I've had all of this cell I need. And yeah, we're gonna let you go now, Paul. Open this up. If all your properties are in there, sign outside the envelope. A video sexy straight? Shanice lied on me raping her? I want to give you a good warning about that, though, Paul, over hitting Shanice and chaining her up like you did. Like I said, that was a spur of the moment type thing, her coming at me. 
See, this here is my St. Christopher I was telling you about. Mm. Hey, uh, you sure they want a hundred dollar bill in here? No, I didn't find a hundred dollar right, Well, I guess I'll try. No, because uh, I tell you, if Shanice filed a complaint right, that's something that we would definitely call you for. Easy, my brother. What's the matter? Well, take it easy. I heard you. Brother, your size need to know his own strength. Now, did you think about that, Paul? You were smacking Shanice around and chin up like you do it.